So the liberty principle has these two parts. The first part says we should all have equal liberty because people are basically equal and we should treat equal things equally. If there's no reason to treat things differently, then we shouldn't do it. The second part says, well, they shouldn't just be equal. They should also have as much liberty as possible because we want, we want to be free, we deserve to be free. If there's no reason to restrict our liberty, then you may as well have as much as possible. Now, the inequality principle is the second one, and this tells us when we can violate the first. Now, it's not going to say that we can violate having as much liberty as possible, necessarily. It is going to say that we can violate the equality part. Now, the question is, which inequalities matter? So, Rawls isn't going to say, and that would be foolish for anyone to say, that we should all be absolutely equal in every way. Right, so... The inequalities that matter, he thinks, are things like benefits and burdens and costs and privileges and that sort of thing. Not things like jobs, skills, passions, right? It's silly to say, look, we should all have the same job. Everyone should be a dentist. Or we should all have the same skills. Everyone should be a, a mechanic, right? Everyone should like uh, Bach and Brahms and Beethoven, right? That's crazy. It's fair to say, though, that uh, everyone should have similar privileges in society, or everyone should have similar duties in society. Uh, everyone should have to pay some amount of taxes, everyone should, should uh, have the right to vote, things like that. Um, these are the kinds of equality that matter. But, Rawls will say, that even for the kinds of equality that matter, we can still create inequality sometimes. But, the only way we can do this is when it ends up better for everyone. So everyone needs to think that it's better for the inequality to exist than for the equality to exist and he'll give him, we'll give some uh, examples. So, you might think, incorrectly, Rawls says, that the second principle says we can't give some people special benefits. But, Rawls will say, no, that's crazy. Sometimes special benefits make everyone else better off. So if you think about it, think about uh, you're all in college right now, working your way toward getting a degree, and it is a special benefit of having a degree that you tend to earn more money, or that you're qualified for more jobs. Now, this is unequal, right? We're giving some people, uh, if we think about qualifications for jobs and earning more money, more liberty to apply for certain jobs, to get certain jobs, to earn more money. But that's okay, right? The special benefits are unequal, but we're all better off as a result because you, as someone who's earning a degree, you want your, de your degree to mean something. You want to earn more money and to get the right sorts of jobs. And in fact, you also want the right kinds of people to get these important jobs. Right? We think it's important that only people with an MD get to be doctors, that only people who've been trained get to be dentists or get to work on your car. Right? We shouldn't just let anybody do this, because we're all better off when experts do it. This is the kind of inequality he's talking about. So now Rawls wants to say, look, I've given you my two principles. They look pretty simple. I'm going to show you now how we can apply these if we wanted to create a fair, just society. And so we're going to need some basic assumptions, he says, to show how these are going to work. So here are his basic assumptions. First, he's going to say people are basically self-interested. Um, this doesn't mean that we're entirely selfish, right? But we, we basically, uh, we're not going to make huge sacrifices for other people just for no reason. Um, if we would, right, it doesn't look like we need to sort of set up a society that, that keeps us all in line, right? We would just expect everyone to be good and kind and such all the time, that we don't need the law. Right, so we may as well assume... He says, people are at least basically self-interested, and then see if we can make these rules still apply. Second, people are rational, so they know how to get what they want. Um, they know, first, what they want, and second, how to get it. Third, people are basically equal, both in what they need and in their power to obtain it. And fourth, people do want some sort of society or are already in one, right? So we're not going to say, like, look, it would be better not to have a society at all. And what he's going to set up here is, what he's gonna, is what's often called a social contract view. So here's the first step. He's going to say, well... First, we need to figure out a process to judge principles. Or, and by principles here, he means uh, rules and regulations and structures and institutions for our society. Uh, so before we start arguing about what the law should be about the speed limit or what, you know, how many branches of government there should be, anything like that, we need to know how we're going to know which suggestions, which policies are better. And it's important to know that these principles will be binding more or less permanently in our, in our little thought experiment. So there's no way to sort of change them uh, later on just to suit you. So we're also going to say that no one should propose very unequal processes or principles. First, because others won't agree to it. And second, because you don't know what's going to happen in your life and this inequality could come back to hurt you. We'll talk more about this and more policies in our next video.